Welcome to Business Influencers. Hope everyone is having a great week. Again, we want to welcome any new guests that are new to Business Influencers. You found us here at Tell Radio. We also encourage you to listen to our show on Apple as well as Spotify. And of course, our video portion of the show on YouTube. And again, you can always watch it on tellradio.org. Again, each and every week, are, we are committed to bringing subject matter experts, sharing their words of wisdom to help elevate your business and level of influence to the next level. And it's through influence that you can impact more lives and more people in your industry to really take your business to the next level. If you have any uh, ideas for content that you would like to see here on the show, feel free to reach out to us at Chris at Christopher Salem. Dot com. Today's show is being brought to you today by Global Awakened Events. This is a, an event that will be taking place in Miami from February 29th on Hump Day through March 3rd. There is going to be a conference as well as an opportunity to meet with thought leaders around the world that will be coming in to share their words of wisdom to ele help elevate your business to the next level. And this is an opportunity to learn from some of the best and the best in their specific areas of expertise. There also will be a yacht mastermind. Yes, on a yacht, a mastermind on a yacht, all part of this package. And if you'd like some more information about attending and an opportunity to transform your business, feel free to reach out to them at globalawakenedevents.com. That's globalawakenedevents.com. You can let them know that business influencers sent you over and they'd be more than happy to take care of you. With that being said, we got a great show for you here today. We're going to be talking about what is really keeping you from achieving your goals. Now, if we're going to achieve goals, we got to not only make sure they're specific, clear, and concise, but we got to first know what's getting in our way, because if we don't solve the problem, then how can we create effective solution? Well, you're going to be learning about that today from Judy Kane. She is the founder of Aligned Consciousness, which helps people identify and transform the subconscious beliefs that keep them from repeating ineffective, stressful patterns. Her clients experience changes that allow them to achieve in their goals with ease and comfort. She is the author of Your Four Truths, How Beliefs Impact Your Life. She also hosts workshops and presents in group sessions, conferences, and podcasts. Originally from Richmond, Virginia, she lives near Tampa Bay, Florida, usually with a rescue cat or dog or two as part of her household. And without further ado, we welcome Judy Kane to the show. Judy, how are you doing today? I am great. How are you doing, Chris? Doing great. Well, we are looking forward to finding more information. We know, I, I know limiting beliefs can get in the way, especially when it comes to goals. Let's talk about, you know, from your experience and everything you do in, on a daily basis in this area, it, are these beliefs the, the, the catalyst that are getting in the way from people realizing their goals? Absolutely. Subconscious beliefs uh, create our perception of the world, basically. So we get them before we're seven, usually, most of them by the time we're seven years old. And um, it's it's 95 percent of how we behave. It's how we think, how we interpret events and translate people's behaviors. Wow. Absolutely. And again, I mean, I mean, this is probably seven years old. So this is ob obviously things that people are learning in, in these when you're a child in your household. It could be what you observe in your mom or dad or some other type of an authoritative figure that could have a negative impact. Doesn't mean that there's nothing wrong with your mom and dad. We all have, you know, we're all human beings, but but it's a reality. It's just something that happens. And, and from what you're sharing, that is where the awareness has to be to make take that first step to, to make sure that we're working, make sure our goals are going to work effectively if we know what's getting in the way. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. So um, when we're trying to make goals, you know, if we learn to be, um, if we learned when we were little, it was not okay to make a mistake, we're not likely to choose big goals, mm -hmm. right? Because we don't want to fail at them. Or if we learn that to be successful, you have to work 24 seven all your life. Uh, you might have subconscious beliefs that are keeping you from being successful because it's, you want more balance in your life. Yeah. 
And sometimes like what would be, I mean, I've learned from experience and correct me if I'm wrong, you know, the body has, sends messages all the time. Like it could be through pain. It could be through just something in your gut or, you know, it could be something. There's always some kind of sign that, you know, that when something's not working, that's the mind and the body, you know, sharing with you that something's got to change. This isn't, this is, you know, you got to fix, you got to address this before you can get better at this to move forward. You're absolutely right. The body, I, I think of it as an instrument panel, right? And it, it, it lets you know if things are, are not optimal and, and it's your responsibility to pick up on the signals before they get worse or louder, you know, or more. Um, and so, yeah, paying attention, uh, you know, to begin with is, you know, if you've got a fear of something going on, you're going to feel a little bit of anxiety at, yeah. at least when you think about doing something. Uh, it might be a lot more pronounced than anxiety. It might be, you know, really stressful or it could be a panic attack. You don't, I mean, there's a spectrum, but if if you're feeling uneasy about so, doing something, you've probably, unless it's, you know, like truly dangerous, um, there's probably subconscious beliefs making you think there's something wrong with doing that. Yeah, you're right. Like you said, you know, unless it's a life or death situation, that's understandable. That's that that would be true fear. But this fear that we, you know, and fear is usually the 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 thing that you know that that sh triggers from, it's from a triggering situation that then like you said gets those beliefs coming in from the past and the future into the future to now you know stop us in our tracks with with what we're trying to work forward you know we're not good enough imposter syndrome whatever that may be yeah absolutely Can you share with us like you know what would you recommend there are probably 99% of people that are probably in the world probably are experiencing it, not more. I mean, everybody on some level, but some, maybe there are some people that have mastered this. And, but what would you share like with people that are experiencing, you know, some, they're experiencing stress, they have anxiety, maybe perhaps they've had an occasional panic attack. They're, they're not where they desire to be. What would you recommend would be something, you know, they can do to start working to solve the problem create the solutions now to put their goals into motion? One of the first things I do when I start working with a client is ask them what it is that they want. They come to me because they want something to be different, right? Uh, typically, they're trying to avoid something with their choices in life. Uh, that, you know, they they don't want to be poor or they don't want to be in a bad relationship or they, you know, whatever it is. Uh, they're trying to avoid something with their choices. So the first thing is to get them to figure out what they really want. And that's a hard question for a lot of people. They've never thought of it that way. Mm. So the first thing is, and you mentioned this in the beginning of the show, getting clear on your goals, right? Yeah. So, and like you said, what are they, what's really important to them? And it's so funny that you, well, it's not funny. I mean, well, it is, but it isn't, right? It, it's kind of like, what do you really desire? And then it's like, people sometimes go, I don't really know. Yeah. Like, well, then that's why <laughs> if you don't know, then you're, you're kind of drifting. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. So first of all, if they get, you know, if they figure out what they want, and then if they can get very, very clear on how that's going to look examples for the, for your subconscious and for yourself, right. Of, you know, what are some examples of how this is going to look once it's true and, and get very clear details on it, like visual details. What are people saying? What are you saying to yourself? And most important, how does it feel once you're in that situation? Because registering what those emotions are going to be like is very powerful. Yeah, exactly. Emotions like in this case, if we have these emotions and you, and I'm sure if you're going through these mixed emotions, they're going to be negative, positive, and especially the negative ones. Cause we have, a, you know, people have a tendency of resisting or trying to escape it. That's where, you know, people fall into addiction. I know I did when I struggled with 12 years of, of addiction, it, you know, I escaped it. I avoided it instead of embracing it because I saw the challenges and problems as an opportunity would it be safe to say the emotions it's better to respond from them or to them or both rather than react to them? 
Oh, well, I'm always an advocate of response because if you're reacting, you're being hijacked. Yes. When I work with phobia clients, um, for instance, if somebody's got a snake phobia, you know, they, it's like, well, I don't want to love snakes. Well, you don't have to love snakes, but what we want to do is let you choose what to do when you see a snake, right? <laughs> you, you want to be able to choose your response. And I think yeah. that's true in all situations, be able to look at it, be very clear, level-headed about it, evaluate what it is and choose how you want to respond. Yeah, that's so true. And it, it seems like you got more control over, you know, a lot of the, a lot of things we're not in control, but we, we we can control that, and it puts us in a better situation. What would be some other things you could share that people can start doing, like on a daily basis, if there is a certain process that you recommend that can start getting people to start making that shift away from these limiting beliefs that are getting holding them back from executing on their goals. Efficiently. Notice the notice the patterns and be curious, right? So many people I work with, you know, their response is, well, this is just the way I am. Well, true. It doesn't mean it's the way you have to be, right? Just because you are this way now doesn't mean that you're locked into that pattern for the rest of your life. So that you have options. Um, so notice the patterns and be curious and see if they make sense. You know, I mean, if they're if they're not supporting what you want to be doing and if they make no sense to you logically, then they're probably subconscious beliefs in there contributing to the problem. Yeah. Yeah. So true. And and then is there like I mean, do you recommend like when you recognize what these are, is it something that can we do? Can we just release it or do, do you is there something like that maybe you could do, I don't know if it's meditation, something that you can kind of, when you get that clarity, how I can start to get, you know, release them or, or, you know, release them out of your, your system or your, your mindset. Honestly, the the most effective way I have seen uh, is that visualization. visualization. Other than going to somebody who can help, right? I mean, I can help people change them. A lot of people can, there are different modalities, uh, but, you know, for you, you, most people would rather start at home, right? See oh, yeah. Themselves. Uh, and, and so that visualization of the way you want it to be, the examples of how it's going to be, you know, the the relief or the gratitude or whatever it is with the situation when it's playing out as you want it to, uh, just patterning that, getting the experience in there and, and kind of pre-paving for it. Um, is one of the most powerful ways I've seen of, of being able to do it yourself. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. That's fabulous. And is this something like the visualization, is it something you do daily or is it like just. Well, you know, do it as often as necessary. Uh, it, it, you know, it's, um, it's amazing. I, the process I use is a fast change process, right? Um, but sometimes the subconscious doesn't even know what the person wants. It's like, oh, yeah, we can do it, but I don't know what you're talking about. So it's going to yeah. be a gra- <laughs> grab bag, you know, or, you know, or, or, uh, result to this. You know? So you need to kind of get clear on it. And And we have noticed people who do the same thing that I do that Sometimes doing that, it means that they don't even need to need to do the, the real process for change. Just being that clear can make a difference. Wow. So, uh, yeah, it, yeah, I mean, it's amazingly powerful to be able to do that. And at least if you if it doesn't make the change, at least, you know, where you want to be, you know where you are. So you can figure out some steps to get from A to B. Yeah, absolutely. I love that. And and it and it's a process. Right. And and. You know, you're not going to go to A to Z overnight, but but that you can now. But it, like you said, if you could recognize what's getting in your way first and start to work on removing them, the better off you're going to be now visualizing. Well, you visualizing what you're looking to accomplish, and now you can set in motion those goals with systems. What do you recommend in terms of like how to break down goals? Like if people now have that clarity now of what's getting in their way and they're working on releasing that. Maybe perhaps there, there's a form of forgiveness in there. Who knows uh, for themselves and other people if they feel they were wronged early in life, whatever that may be. 
what would be the process you fit with goals that you feel like would people be, would best be able to achieve what's important to them? Well, you're talking to a person who spent decades in IT, mostly in management. So <laughs> uh, you, we start with the end in mind, right? You know, the, here's the big result at the end of the project. And then you break it down into manageable steps and figure out the sequence. If, you know, if one depends yeah. on another, you figure that out. It's like a project plan. Uh, so you just, you know, you have the big thing and you break it down into manageable Management. steps. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I guess we don't want to scare people and say, hey, you don't have to be a Six Sigma practitioner to do this. <laughs> <laughs> no, you know, it's a, it's it's just logic. It's just a linear approach to it, right? But for those people who aren't that linear, getting that emotion factor in there, and, and even for those who are, you know, really focusing on how it's going to feel. Because the reason you're doing something is the, the whole reason people want to do anything is because of the way they think they're going to feel at the end of it, right? Yeah. When you mentioned something, it's kind of like you, you, you used an analogy, like kind of it's like project, like if you were like a project, a project management. Now, there's the thing about motivation, and then there's discipline. When I when I say discipline, it means that we 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 know we're doing something we know is right or good for us, but even though we we our first tendency is to resist it because we you know we don't like it, it's foreign to us, it feels uncomfortable. But what would be the difference between because like motivation is like a New Year's resolution, like I'm going, I'm motivated, I'm going. This is the year I'm gonna you know, I'm going to release 30 pounds and, and it's going to come off for good. They start off with the first week or two and then, oh, something happens. Uh, I'm not going to go today. I'll go tomorrow. And then the motivation just sort of whew, kind of goes away and then nothing happens. Is there a difference between the motivation and what discipline is or in being consistent, you know, being consistent with the discipline, if, if, if just to see like what works best with executing on those goals. Yeah, I mean, to me, there's a big difference between motivation and inspiration. Yeah. Inspiration. There you, yeah, there you go. I love it. Uh, motivation, you're being pushed, which means you're trying to avoid something. Yeah. Inspiration, you're being pulled. Yeah. Right. And, and that's towards that end result that makes you want to be there. Right. It's, it's, if it's, if somebody is, when I work with people and they say their goal is to make a certain amount of money, well, it's not the money. I mean, you know, they, they have a feeling or a, an end result that's emotional for them. They think they're going to get when they hit that amount. Usually they, they're scarcity based people and no amount's going to do it. They've got to change that money scarcity mindset. Oh, because they'll hit that amount and it's still not going to be enough. And it's, you know, well, it must've been a bigger amount, right? You know, it'll, it'll never be enough if, if that's what's driving them. But, um, but there's usually a, either financial freedom or legacy, you know, if they're talking about the money, there there's emotions attached to what they think that money is going to give them. So, um, you know, anything that you're trying to do, if you can figure out the payoff emotion, if you will, for that end result, I think that's going to be the, the biggest thing. Yeah. But when you talk about the willpower, so often this is one of the things that I notice with people. They beat themselves up because they're not achieving a goal and they think they haven't been consistent enough or working hard enough or that they're not as smart. They tell themselves all these reasons why it's not happening. And frequently it's subconscious beliefs, which yeah. are really hard to get past. You know, it's it's not as simple as just working harder. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. It's so true. And so when you said inspired, it, it seems like when you are inspired, you, you it's something like you're more like it's more you have more in control over, again, your communication, your maybe your behavior, your attitude, your emotions, responding versus reacting in your action. And you select like motivation is more like where we're focused on what we can't control. We're looking for something to stimulate that feeling like, ah, I want to do this. And maybe it's some person, it's a situation, it's a, but then that doesn't happen or it's not consistent enough. And like you said, I, it, yeah, people can beat themselves up. Like instead of, you know, seeing this, like, Hey, you're not, you may not get the end result right away. Maybe the person you're working with 
you know, might achieved it sooner than you. It doesn't mean you failed. It just means that everybody's on a different time frame. It's not about comparison. So I loved when you shared that. What would be some things you would recommend in those cases when people are, you know, they are they feeling inspired and they they're committing to a process, but then they're not achieving the results what they thought quicker, and they're now that now they're beating themselves up. What would you share to recommend that, that could help them? This is where looking at the patterns is going to be really important. Are they self sabotaging? Well, maybe they've got some fear of success there that you know it could be based on all sorts of things. Um, or maybe they don't think they deserve it, right? Mm-hmm. Maybe it's like, well, you know, I I don't know enough or I'm I'm not enough in some capacity, right, for that to be happening to me. Um, it, they might be afraid of being seen or heard. I mean, there are all sorts of things that can be coming up when people aren't moving along in the flow, if you will. Yeah. And- uh, and so looking at the patterns and trying to figure out what, could, you know, are there consistent emotions that come up when you think about doing something, start investigating those. Or, you know, if if it makes no sense why you just don't like to sit down and write your checks, right? But you get a panicky feeling in the middle of it. Things that don't make, that you can't explain logically, those are all usually subconscious beliefs that are mm. that are trying to get you to do something different. Yeah, absolutely. No, I love that. Love what you shared there. And and this is such an important, I mean, I, I love what you do because, you know, I look at, you know, your beliefs are like a foundation, you know, how you think determines how, wh- how you be and how you be determines what you become and what you become will determine how you do things differently to have different and better results. So many people are caught up in the do and the have. I want to I want to do better. I want to find a different way to do things differently so then I can have those results. Well, if you don't have four legs to stand on or a foundation to do those things, then then it, it's going to come crumbling down and that thinking and being and becoming is the foundation. I, I at least I what I've learned in my experience share with us like that when you look at a foundation of anything what how important that would be in this process you know achieving goals all right well so in my book there there are four categories of beliefs that i have seen that impact people the most that they want that end up being changed to get what they want and the first one is feeling safe oh psychologically yeah you know, and it and it's like it's not just physically safe because you know that's not the bulk of the people I see. It it's people you know emotionally safe, you know, from all sorts of different things. Yeah. Um, so feeling safe is a big thing. You got to get that out of the way before anything else. Absolutely. Um, yeah, feeling worthy. And, and it's like feeling, valuing yourself and feeling like others value what you have to contribute just because of who you are. Mm. Uh, not, not conditional, but just for yourself of being valuable, uh, being lovable, I think is, you know, knowing that you are, are good enough for people to love you I, I, is a very important thing and feeling connected to something bigger than yourself. So mm-hmm. I, those I think are groundwork types of, of um, belief sets that are really important to feeling fulfilled and accomplishing whatever the goals and mission are that, that you're working on. Yeah, absolutely. How about like accountability? How important is accountability when it comes to executing on these goals or you know, not just accountable to yourself, but, you know, maybe other people, resources or things like that you can share. I think um, I think accountability is great. If you've got somebody who is helping you along the way, you know, assuming this is a supportive accountability as opposed to a, a, a punishing account. Oh, yeah, this would be supportive. Yeah, not, 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 <laughs> yeah. not, not, not somebody like a drill sergeant, not, yeah. not. Yeah. Not that old football coach back from my days. No, no. <laughs> but but yeah, somebody who can help you see it, who you can bounce the ideas off, that can be encouraging to you, that, you know, can point out people who frequently don't see their own successes or they feel funny saying what they do well or what they've done uh, that worked. And so having somebody else help point that out so they can celebrate those successes, I think is really important. Yeah, yeah, so true. Yeah. Accountability. Like you said, it's not, it's not 
punishing, but it's supportive. And like, and that goes back to what you said about being safe, emotionally safe, psychologically safe as well. Cause I always do psychologically. Cause I, when I work with organizations, that's just a, a more term they can identify with, you know, and then emotionally might be more personal and that, but no, I love that when we shared there uh, in terms of like now goals, goals are, yes, we can maybe achieve something that you've, you've, you've achieved, but does it mean now, now that you've achieved like, okay, everything, you know, it's done, you know, you don't have to do, no, now you're off to the, you're off to the next goal. It's, it's, it's ongoing. <laughs> can you share with like a little bit about that? Like, like, what can is there something we can learn from what worked and what didn't work towards those goals? What can we do better? Is there things that like that you know that you know like a, a self reflection? Something you can share that kind of give people an idea of you know what can they do to get better at you know executing on their goals, be more efficient, or and so on. You know, I like to think of the plot process more as like being in the flow, mm. right? The the more you can get you know, your whole brain in engaged and on board with the things that you want, the easier those things become. Uh, but I'm a firm believer that we are here for expansion, right? Yes. So there is no end, you, you know, it's just, so now what do I want? And, and once you get, and then now what do I want? You know, and I, I think you get better at the process, like anything, the, the more you do it, the easier it becomes. Yeah. The more you get those patterns in, the more um the more uh fulfilling and satisfying it is because you're not second guessing can you or should you? You know, it's just, oh, and this is what I want now. And and you've got the the pathways to do that. Yeah, absolutely. Well, you know, you have shared such valuable information here. I know this is a topic we could talk on for at least another hour, and I'm sure we could definitely have you on for another show to do a continuation of this. But we're getting towards the end of the show, and I want to make sure people get to know you. You know, you know, how do they re reach you? How can anything that you, you would like to share what, what you're up to or what you'd like to share with them? Sure. Uh, well, I've got a website, alignedconsciousness.com. Uh, and there are places there where uh, they're welcome to download some free material that talks more about subconscious beliefs. Um, I've got a blog. I've got a newsletter. Uh, people are, I'm always open for people booking a 15 minute phone call to get more information about uh, what's going on with them or how I might be able to help them. Or, you know, other resources that are out there. I do have the book. <laughs> that's, <laughs> yeah, that's, you, you can always get that where every books can be bought. And uh, so, yeah, there are a lot of, of places where you can find out more uh, about me and the things that I offer. I, I offer uh, free workshops on a monthly basis. That's all on the website. Well, we highly encourage everybody listening to reach out to Judy at Align and Consciousness. Again, there is a wealth of information that could help you personally and also in your business, not only you individually for it, but for also for teams as well. We highly encourage you to reach out to her and we'll make sure that information is in the show notes. And again, Judy, thank you so much for taking the time to be out of your schedule to be with us here today. Thank you so much. I've enjoyed the conversation. Thank you. And listeners, we want to thank you each and every week joining us here at Business Influencers. Again, we are committed to bringing in subject matter experts like Judy to share the words of wisdom to help elevate your personal success and business to the next level through the power of influence to impact yourself and more people that you touch in your life, in your business. Till then, everybody have a great rest of your week and we'll see you next week and have a great day. Oh,